Welcome back to the Dragon's Lair. This is DKOG73. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out. And if this is your first time checking out the channel, I want you to know I appreciate you stopping by. Man, I'm fired up. I've wanted a four player arcade for a very long time. And you know what, mad props to you GRS. You guys have created an amazing product. It absolutely screams epic. I think I was a salesperson for the company, but I'm not. I'm a gamer for life. I'm passionate about video games. I've always wanted something like this. Let's do this. Let's put this arcade together and I will see you in the build. Welcome back. Fired up to get this assembled. There's a huge amount of screws. In fact, a whole bunch more, right? There's just bags and bags of screws. You know what? It's one step at a time, right? Kind of like Wreck-It Ralph. One game at a time, Ralph. And you don't want to over tighten this. Has been prepped with the cam lock screws. Now we're going to prep the other panel. We're prepping the left panel. Again, we're using the cam lock screws. It's a super awesome system. Um, my recommendation is if you're gonna build any kind of arcade, arcade one up, iArcade, game room solutions, I would definitely use a table. And you know, I put down a microfiber cloth just so I don't scratch anything. All right, so the left panel's been prepped. This is the speaker panel right here. I've already removed the speakers that came with the arcade right here. We're putting on the Edifier G2000s. I'll put links in the description. 100 bucks, thousands of awesome reviews. I did a bunch of research and uh, they pump. So it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. Anytime I wanna mount something like this, if I have the opportunity, I want to use double-sided sticky tape. And in this case, I've got 30-pound Gorilla Tape right here. And what you'll notice is that this is flush, right? So I can actually stick this just like this. It's a perfect fit, just like that. This is really going to add a lot of boom to the sound. Just like that. There's going to be a little overlap, but it's all good. Take your time, line it up. Just like that. And we'll Velcro all this and make it nice and super clean. Does the job. The first mod on the arcade has been completed. We've upgraded the speaker system. This is our speaker panel. We've added the Edifier G2000s. We've used 30 pound Gorilla Tape. We've Velcroed the cables. And as you can see, the 30 pound Gorilla Tape does the trick. And the speakers were nicely centered. Let's go ahead and put this into the cabinet now. Let's connect our very first panel to the arcade. This is the speaker grill panel. We're gonna be using the cam lock system. We actually already prepped the panels. You have real low clearance, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure and take this 3.5 millimeter stereo cable, it comes with the edifier speakers. You wanna plug it into the auxiliary end just like that. And then you wanna take your cam lock fastener and put it in 
just like that. Super simple. Now it's just one quarter turn to the right. Let's prepare the LED marquee. You know, the LED marquee, it's absolutely like magic. It's a beautiful thing. It really makes the cabinet pop. And you know, this part of the, the cabinet building process, it's probably one of the more complex parts. And uh, you know, the best advice I give everybody when you're building an arcade, take your time. So essentially, here's how it works. Here's your plex right here. You've got two pieces of plex, is that you have these it's beautiful graphics right here. What's gonna happen is, is you're gonna go ahead and remove this protective coating. You're gonna place your beautiful graphics right there. And then you're gonna place the other plex on top, just like that. And then what's gonna happen, you're gonna take your LED marquee and it's gonna line up just like that. Before we put everything together, one of the things you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to cut this out right here. What I use is a razor blade and it's a brand new one. Now here's the deal, you get one shot at this. So again, you wanna line up your cut perfect. You wanna have a very straight edge ruler or in this case, I'm actually gonna use a tape measure Make sure you have something sharp. If it's super dull, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be harder to make that cut and that's where mistakes happen. And as always, if you're gonna be using a razor blade, be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and do that work off to the side. We've prepared the marquee graphics. The first thing I always say, take your time. This actually took about 15 minutes I wanted to get it as flawless as I could. Once you do that, you'll notice on your Plex, you have a protective coating. You're gonna wanna remove that just like that, right? Once that protective film has been removed, you're gonna go ahead and place your marquee graphics as you can see. It's been cut clean, put this off to the side. You'll start from one side of the Plex. You really wanna get it as flawless as you can. Take your time. Once you do that, tape it up. You'll lift this up. You'll remove some of the backing from the graphics and slowly move your way across one side of the plex to the other and you will have a super clean LED marquee ready to rock and roll.
as you can see, I took my time. And you know what? I think it came out pretty good. There's no bubbles. It's, it's pretty much like 99% like absolutely to the edge. This dynamic marquee, it's off the hook. It looks amazing. Take your time on this. This is probably the hardest step in the build right here. So here we are. We're gonna do probably the hardest thing you can do and that is put the marquee in place. After that, this build is gonna be a breeze. We're gonna be playing games in no time. As you can see right here, we have these cam lock fastener holes right here, right? This one's wider, this one's more narrow. As you can see on the cabinet, this is more narrow, this is more wide. So it's real simple. You wanna make sure, right, that your team molding is facing the front. So you're simply going to place this in just like this. Now obviously we're gonna use the cam lock fasteners just like that. So you can see, I've added the top panel for the marquee, and you know what? I've got this blue piece of tape. That's going to enable me to put the LED marquee in and essentially get it situated until I lock the cam screw. I'll show you in just a minute. And again, one more thing, uh, you'll notice that there's a thicker part of this uh, LED marquee that goes towards the top and the thinner part right here that is on the bottom. So before we do this, we're gonna take off the protective layer just like that. Be very careful not to touch that screen so we don't get fingerprints on there. And what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna set this in just like this. And now you'll know why I have the tape. I can use it. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and tape this together. Just like this. Now it's gonna hold that in place. So essentially what I wanna do, right, is once I've got this right there, where I know it's securely fastened in those grooves. Gonna tighten this up, just like that. And this is how you can do it all by yourself. You won't need another set of hands to essentially hold those panels. The next step is gonna be to put the marquee plex with those awesome Donkey Kong and Street Fighter graphics right here. And we're gonna slide those into the grooves and I'll show you that next. All right, so we've completed the marquee. As you can see, it's sandwiched between two pieces of Plex. I've cleaned it thoroughly. You don't wanna have any fingerprints on there, right? You want your LED marquee to absolutely pop. So, as you can see, we've got the top, the bottom, we've got the LED screen in, we've got a piece of tape right here kind of keeping it together. I've tightened the cam lock screws down below. I've got another huge long piece of tape right here. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in. I'm gonna adjust the LED screen a little bit and then I'm gonna clamp it together super tight with this tape right here. Let's do this. And then from here, you can actually adjust the LED on the back side. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna remove the old tape. Like this. And now, we're gonna clamp it super tight.
this arcade cabinet, it's almost done. There's a few more steps left, right? Essentially, we need to mount this 27 inch HD monitor, right? We need to install a few more panels. Then we're gonna set up the control panel. And from there, we're gonna build the riser. We're gonna connect everything up. You know what? We're gonna be playing games in no time. We're going to put the final side panel on, then we've got the control panel, then we're going to assemble the riser, we're going to connect everything up, we're so close, let's do this! You know, this last part of the build, it's kind of tricky. Take your time. You're going to line up this panel. We're going to be done in just a minute. The core cabinet has been built. 
man, it looks amazing. We still need to put the control panel over the top, right? We still need to assemble the riser. Once we do that, we're gonna mount the arcade on top of the riser. We're gonna connect everything up. We're so close, let's keep going. The cabinet's all done. Man, it looks absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to share it with you. It's, it's something I've wanted for a long time. But before we do that, we need to assemble this riser. Once that's done, we're gonna mount the arcade on top of the riser. I'm stoked, I can't wait to show you the inside of the cabinet, the control panel, and then it's game time. Riser's all done. I'm so fired up. This four player arcade cabinet is all done. You know, I've been working on it for like three days. I've always wanted a four player cabinet. And uh, you know, when we did the unboxing and I was looking at the art, I was like, oh my gosh. Dude, I hope this thing plays as good as it looks, right? So yeah, man, I'm super fired up. I wanna thank everyone for hanging out. I wanna show you what's on the inside of this cabinet. So I'm gonna take the camera around the backside so I can show you that. I'll bring it around the front. We'll talk about what's under the hood. Here's a quick preview. There's a lot going on. We'll go over some of that. And once we do that, I'll give you a quick video tour of the whole arcade and we'll do some gameplay. Let's see what's inside this beast. This is the inside of the four player arcade cabinet. Right here, you've got the control panel, right? And like I was saying before, this has been pre-assembled by Game Room Solutions, which, you know, if you've ever built your own control panel, you'll know it takes some time, right? Even a single player, like, like building your own joystick, takes some time. Two player, a lot more time. A four player with a trackball could take forever, right? So super stoked that it came pre-assembled, but even more stoked, when I flicked the power switch for the very first time, everything fired up flawlessly on the first boot. And I was like, yes, right? Cause you know, you just spent a whole bunch of money. Last thing you want to do is build this whole thing out and have a network, no dice. That would be a total bummer, right? 
This is your HDMI cable that goes from the control panel to your 27 inch HD monitor, right? This is the power switch like I just talked about. This is the power cable that powers up the entire control panel. This is your 3.5 millimeter stereo cable. This goes from the speakers above into the Raspberry Pi. And you'll see down below right here, the control panel is mounted to the arcade. And you know what's even cooler? Down below, the arcade is mounted to the riser in the same way. There's not one single bolt on the exterior of the arcade. It's super clean, it's super pristine. And you know what's even better than all that? It plays amazing, right? These are your two power strips here. One is for the LED marquee and one is for the LED monitor. And again, everything has just been, been flawless, right? I mean, this, this arcade just feels amazing. It feels like a tank, it feels strong. It feels like an arcade when you're playing games and that's what's so important. This is the power strip that powers up the arcade. Right here, you've got the LED monitor. You've got the LED marquee, right? Here, you've got the control panel. And right here, you've got the speaker system. We've also got four USB inputs for future expandability. You know we're gonna be doing some LED lights on this thing, make it glow, right? This is the inside of the upper half of this arcade cabinet. It essentially comprises all audio and video. We'll start with these Edifier speakers. These are G2000s that are about a hundred bucks on Amazon. And you know what? I read a bunch of reviews and I'm like, let's give them a shot, right? It's Amazon. You can return it if, if it doesn't work out. They sound amazing. You know, if I was going to go through this massive project of building a dream arcade, I wanted the sound to be awesome. And these little Edifier speakers work great. I'll put a link in the description. This is the LED controller board for the LED marquee, which looks absolutely amazing. It's one of the elements of this arcade that really makes it stand out. It's absolutely crazy looking. This is the 27 inch HD monitor. And you know what? It looks really crisp. It looks really, really clean. I was actually really impressed. I mean, you know, everything about this arcade has been off the hook. And again, could I build a bigger arcade? I mean, there's always a bigger fish. Could I spend three, four, five, six, eight thousand dollars? Absolutely. But I think for fifteen hundred bucks, I think this is the best arcade you can buy for fifteen hundred bucks. Period. This is the Game Room Solutions four player control panel that came bundled with this arcade. And you know, one of the cool things about GRS is obviously they offer a bundle, right? And they offer the ability for you to upgrade. Like for example, I upgraded all four joysticks to Sandwall. But they also offer you the ability to just order the control panel by itself. Now, if you wanna get the control panel fully assembled, you can do that. If you wanna get the control panel by itself and use your own hardware, you can absolutely do that. Now, in this bundle right here, right? I mean, we've got a lot going on, right? We've essentially got 28 buttons, right? We've got four joysticks. We've got an LED trackball, a Raspberry Pi. We've got all kinds of cabling. So let's take a quick dive into this control panel. Let's start with joysticks. I've upgraded these joysticks to Sanwa. As you can see, this is player one, this is player two, this is player three, and that's player four. The next thing I did was, is I upgraded the restrictor gates right here. They come with kind of a circle gate, right? It's kind of more of an eight-way feel. I'm a huge fan of octagonal gates, and the reason why is I really feel like they bridge the gap between four-way and eight-way games. And you know, as far as games like Donkey Kong and, and Pac-Man, these octagonal gates, they work great. You can lock in left or down or up or right, but they also work great for games like Metal Slug, right? Or they work great for games like Shinobi. So again, I've upgraded all of the joysticks to Sanwa, and then I've upgraded the gates to octagonal gates. Now let's talk about the buttons. We've got 28 buttons, and you know what's kind of interesting about these buttons? They are Sanwa clone buttons, but they have the look and feel of Suzo Hop. And you know, 
it, when I first saw it, I was like, oh no, right? They're not real. They're not like buttons that I could easily upgrade because at, at some point I'm gonna take all these buttons out and replace them with Suzo hat buttons and cherry switches. But I wanna share with you during some initial gameplay and you'll see this, these buttons actually work really, really well. They're very, very quiet. Like I said, they have a Sanwa feel and they have a Suzo hat look. This is our LED trackball. It's off the hook. I mean, if you want to play Missile Command or you want to play Centipede or a game like, you know, Crystal Castles, you're definitely going to want to have an awesome trackball. This was an upgrade. It cost me 100 bucks. And again, you know, if you get their bundle, you can get the stock sticks that come with the unit, right? You can either choose to, to get a trackball or to not get a trackball you can go ahead and keep the marquee that they give you in the bundle or in my case i wanted to get that led marquee dynamic display it's off the hook when i show you the gameplay and i show you how it all looks it's absolutely it's awesome can't wait to show it to you let's talk about encoder boards we've got three of them in this control panel this encoder board encompasses player one and player two this encoder board encompasses player three and this board right over here for player four. And you know, these Dragon Rise USB encoder boards, they work great. You'll know if you've ever built your own control panel that you know, these Sanwa joysticks, they have a single connector here and a single connector here. It's super easy to install. You know, there's not a lot of lag. And if you need to replace them, they're like 10 or 12 bucks on Amazon. And like I said, they're great little encoder boards. Could you spend more? Absolutely. Do they do the job? 100%. Let's talk about the Raspberry Pi 4. It's an amazing single board computer. And you know, it's been optimized over the last few years. You know, Raspberry Pi gaming has been a pretty big deal, right? Because it's an extremely cost effective way to essentially build an arcade, right? You don't have to have this massive PC. And this single board computer with four gigabytes of RAM, multiple processors, four USBs, right? It's USB-C powered. It's got dual HDMI out. Obviously we need that, right? With the LCD marquee. But you know, the image that's on here, it's been optimized. You know, the community behind Raspberry Pi and behind RetroPi and behind, you know, RetroArc and all the cores, it's a massive community. They're super passionate gamers. And you know, I've been testing a ton of games. They're all playing great. I'm gonna be showing you that in a minute. But again, I kind of be more fired up you know about this control panel it's been an amazing experience like i said before the first time i powered it up man everything worked flawlessly this is the top of the grs four player control panel and again props to you tina for helping me kind of come up with this this amazing kind of palette of colors we have here again this is player one it's green you know my channel dkog 73 we got a lot of green going on right and then right up here player two we've got blue and green right this is player three right here black and red and again red and black right we've got 28 buttons now these sanwa sticks right here they've got these little mini bat tops these are one pound springs it actually feels nice and loose which you know what it's crazy right you have this kind of loose feel i could tighten them up with like two pound springs but you know what it feels really good i mean we were playing x-men teenage mutant ninja turtles playing great let's talk about the trackball obviously it glows right which is super cool right but it's really all about gameplay for me and when it comes to games like missile command crystal castles centipede having a nice trackball that matters right i wanted to have the full gaming experience i wanted to have a four player cabinet right where we could play teenage mutant ninja turtles right or we could play some street fighter on players one and two right I wanted to make sure if we want to play some Missile Command or some Centipede, we had a nice trackball. And again, you know, this right here is player one. This is player two. It's kind of cool. You can see Ryu right there. He's winding up for a Hadouken, which is essentially the trackball, which I thought was super cool, right? This is Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Over here, we've got Spider-Man. And right over here, we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, along with some amazing companies that have made some of the greatest games of all time. You can see that the team molding is this awesome fluorescent green. I think it pops. This is Zelda. This is the kick plate. We'll go over that a little bit when we do the full video preview. But you know, this control panel, it's huge. 
And when you're playing a four player game, you've got a lot of space to play and that's important. And uh, it just plays great. I love the art, it's high quality art and uh, it just pops. So again, mad props to Game Room Solutions. Here's the arcade booting up right here. And as you can see, the LED marquee is popping. It's awesome. It's kind of cool. Every time you boot up the arcade, a new intro fires up, man. It's awesome. So that's the boot sequence for the arcade. Right here, you can see it's got a Terminator theme. And you know what's so cool? These themes, they change every time you boot up the system. You have a new theme, right? Whether it's Back to the Future, Terminator. Let's play some games and see how this arcade performs. First up, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Check out that marquee right there. Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Love that marquee. You can see we have the side bezel art right there. Let's watch the opening intro. That's what I'm talking about, right there. We'll play a quick round against E Honda. That's Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. It plays flawless. Let's play the next game. You know the cool thing about this arcade? It plays consoles too. We're gonna play a classic. Let's do this. As you can see, we've got the Terminator theme. We got a bunch of cool systems here. Atari 2600, 7800, a Thomas Wave, Daphne, Dreamcast, Sega Genesis, Naomi, Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Let's do this. Watch this. It's awesome. Speed runner. Okay, there's a free man. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo Entertainment System. So now we're gonna play a trackball game. It's one of my favorites. Let's play some Centipede. Love the video snaps, information on the game. Check out that marquee. It's about to change right now. Here it goes. Look at that. It looks so beautiful, right? Check out the bezel art. Looks flawless. Let's coin it up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Plays great. Take this ten feet out, and we're gonna play the next game. The next game we're gonna play uses dual joysticks. There we go. That's centipede. Bingo! Bingo! Let's go! Smash TV. It's a classic. Let's do this. Dual joysticks right here. TV, oh yeah, one more game, let's do this. You know what? We gotta play some Donkey Kong, right? Let's do this. There's our bezels, our marquee, it's off the hook. Let's do this. Gonna wait for some more barrels to come down. See if we can do a little point pressing. There we go. Little wild barrel coming right here. Do this. There we go. We got plenty of time. And that's Donkey Kong. I want to thank you so much for hanging out and watching me build this arcade, man. I'm super stoked. We're going to be doing a ton of gameplay vids. Be on the lookout. I'm going to be playing a group of games on the next gameplay vid. 
And you know what I always say, the game, it's never over. So easy does it. And I will see you next time. It's getting March until it's over. And just like a soldier, I keep on moving forward.